Hey guys, it's Hayes with CheatCheatPros.com. Today we're going to do our College Hoops 2021-2022 season tutorial. So I revamped this College Hoops betting cheat sheet from what I had last year to make it look a lot like the bet tab in the NBA and our college football betting sheet. So hopefully it looks a little bit familiar with some of the color schemes and terminology. So Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So I'm going to run through and show you what the models are, kind of how to look at the sheet, how to check it, and then we're going to look at a few games from yesterday and then a game from today so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. So over here, as always, your sports betting trends. We have our overall records, ATS, cover percentage, mar average margin of victory, so plus is positive, minus is negative. Um, ATS plus minus numbers over under. So you can see here BYU's 3 0 for the under, 0 and 3 for the over. That's how you read that. The percentage, if you don't want to calculate it, of what the over hits. And then the total ATS. So you can see BYU is going under by an average of 12.5 points. ATS and the totals in their game. Over here, we've got the point distribution. In the future, I plan on adding some more stuff to this, but I wanted to see what teams get a majority of their points from two-pointers versus three-pointers. And just to check it, I put free throws in here as well. So you can see if a team is getting a lot shooting from beyond the arc or down in the paint, um, inside the arc, so to speak. And then we'll look later on at how many threes or twos a team gives up and then see if we can find a correlation in there. And then these down here, these are the normal stats we look at. I kept it to points per game, efficiency, same on the defense and possessions. The ranks you can see are blank here. There's still a couple of schools that haven't populated. So it won't kick out a rank. It'll give me an error. So I just blued it out and I'm just waiting for that to fill in. And then here in a few more days, I'll add the rank in for you. And then the main things we're going to look at are going to be up here. And just as always with all of our cheat sheets, click in this box and we got a drop down. There's over 300 colleges. So some of them you'll never use or never see. But for example, I was looking up George Mason and trying to type it in and I couldn't find it. So I had to go over here to the drop down and it's listed as Geo Mason. So just something to keep an eye on. Home team is always the bottom team. If you're new to sports the team on the right if they're side by side or the team on the bottom is always the home team so for example in this game yesterday is right here BYU was at Oregon so we put in BYU and Oregon and you can see the ranking you can see the power rank numbers this helps us with um, some of our algorithms and then there's two basic models that we're going to look at for college hoops we have our power algo which is similar to the uh, I call it the skew line in college football it basically takes a difference of the school strength and kind of puts a spin on it. So hopefully we can capture those KU versus, you know, South Fort Hayes State, these big blowout schools. And then the cheat line, this is completely different methodology than the power algo. This does more against like the league averages. It's more of what we use in like NFL football where all of the teams are similar. So I'm kind of watching the cheat line to see the cheat line didn't really work in college football because when you get Alabama facing a know-nothing school, it just doesn't get big enough. So that's kind of why we have the skew line or in this, we're going to rename it and call it the power algo. Um, but I did put it in there because last year it did work in uh, college hoops. I think we called it the power of 72. Um, but it's basically, it's the same cheat line formula. So I've got them both in here. The power algo is kind of what I'm looking at. And then we've got this alt line, which is just here that I'm tracking. And it's simple. And someone brought this up to me in a forum. So, and I got it down here and then I just put it up here. So it's side by side with all of these. But basically your offense and defensive efficiency, this is how many points they score per 100 possessions. So BYU scores 106 and then they give up 83, so they're plus 0.24, or they score 24 more points on offense than they allow on defense per 100 possessions, so that's really good. A negative number means the team is upside down, and Oregon's 1.06 versus 1.02, so they only score four more points per 100 possessions on offense than defense, so that's a lot less. But basically, we're gonna look at the difference of these two and then multiply it into our projected possessions, and it gives us kind of an efficiency line. Um, so I just put it over here, called up the alt line, started tracking it in some other sports, and it was kind of interesting, some of this stuff, it spit out. 
I um, mean, NBA one day, it had like a 5-0 and or 6-0 and day. So I was like, okay, well, let me make note of this. It's only one day. Let me watch it. But I went ahead and brought it into College Hoops to kind of take a look at because with the different schools, it's kind of fun. And there's so many games that you can plug in here. I want to put as much information in there as possible. I put a quick explainer in here about the power algo. This is, uses the sh school strength differences. So for example, BYU, Oregon, you can see the rank and the power ranking are really similar, but the algo and the cheat line both has BYU minus seven. Alt line has them about 13 points better. And then just to average all three of these out, I put a box over here this morning. Um, just the average of these three over here to see what the average line would be and the average scores. So this is something quick to look at. And then just glance at these two, kind of see what you think. You always want to double check the numbers because there could be one game in there that makes it spit something out that just looks completely ridiculous. And so that's why we have a lot of this offensive points per game, um, offensive efficiency. But if you just look at offensive points per game and defensive points per game allowed, you can tell if something's wanky or not. Also down here on your pace, so your possessions down here. So NBA and college basketball is pretty simple. It's just if you can determine the number of possessions per team and the efficiency and nail it correctly, you can get a somewhat projected score. So on the season, you can see these two teams are really similar as far as possessions per game. And then the last three, they're also very simple. Well, they don't have three, they have exactly three games, so that's why they're the same. Uh, but what I do here is I just average the season, the last three, to kind of see if it's going up, if it's going down. And then the average of these two, I spit down here and say, okay, this is a rough number of what we're looking at. So when I look at this and I see all these numbers are similar, they're within two, this is a pretty good projection. Now, if we'll look at a game where if it's one's 10 higher and one's 10 lower, then you got to determine, you know, is the defense going to take over and lower the number of possessions or is the offense going to push the pace? I typically go with whichever team is favored. That's kind of what I'm going to lean on. So if you look here and there's a difference, then you can say, okay, this average, it could be on the high end or the low end. So when you're looking at totals, our total checker box right here, We've got the high number of possessions, the low number of possessions, and then kind of the, the middle road of what we're going to use. And then our projected efficiency, and this gives us our projected scores. So 136 for a high, 135 for a low. And to check it, you can see the combined and allowed points per game for these two teams. So the last three, they combined for 144, and they've allowed 126. So our projection of 135, it's kind of in the middle. So I would say that's a fair number to take a look at. Um, here, our power algo, you can kind of see what we're projecting the teams at. If there's any skew factor where we spin this up or down, then our projected score and our total. So this has the home team. So we're saying Oregon here would be plus seven, which you can see up here. We got it at plus seven. So the quick look is up here. If you want the details, you can look down here. And then the cheat line, you can see the same thing. Our Projected pace, our efficiency, 71, 64. So we've also got it at seven with 135. So these are kind of the details of the two models right here. Here's where we're gonna go to look at the total and see if we agree with it or don't agree with it. And then this is just kind of some different stuff. I'm tracking some different efficiencies, different possessions to give us some different total numbers. And then I've got a little bit of a, what the score would be if we use this alt line up here which I put up here so you could see if it was a 13, this is what the score would look like. So this is more just kind of tracking, looking at something new um, to go from there. And I think everything else is pretty much straightforward. Everybody knows the sports betting trends, the total. So let's look at a few games now that you know what the sheet looks like. So for example, we had, let me make sure you see this. Okay, BYU Oregon was 81-49. Um, I can't see what the spread was on this game. I clicked into it and I checked on my phone. It didn't show me, so I'm not sure. But BYU won by 30. So we had it minus seven, minus seven. So BYU was unranked. Oregon was the 12th ranked team. So I'm assuming that was a somewhat decent line. So we had BYU winning 72 to 63 for an average. So winning by nine. And then they won. I don't know what the spread was, so I don't know if it's good or bad, but it just kind of tells you that would have been the side that we're on. Um, as far as the total, this ended up with, uh, what, 130 points. And so we projected it about 135 across the board. Um, and you can see the possessions were really close, so I would have a higher confidence in a 135 number. 
and it ended up 130, so that's not too bad. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at another game. Uh, let's we'll stick we uh, we will stick with the top 25. So let's look at Wright State and uh, Purdue. And let me see how Wright State. Okay, so that's an easy one. And Purdue, I don't think they can really abbreviate that. So you can see here we've got a 10% edge to Purdue due to the power ranking. Um, 150th versus the second ranked school. And again, this isn't the what they're ranked in the college basketball. This is just kind of a custom ranking we have based on a set of numbers. So here we've got it. Power algo at minus 38 for Purdue. Cheat line even has 30. So it tells me Purdue's going to blow them out. Alt line's 59. That's kind of funny. Um, I don't ever think you will see a 59 line in basketball. But again, it just shows you that hey, this game should be a blowout. So we had an average score here of 102 to 59, and then the final ended up being 96-52, so that wasn't real far off. I mean, they ended up winning by 44, and we the average was 42, and then we had 38-30. So I don't even know if they put a line on that game, but it just kind of tells you where we're at. As far as the total, they ended up at 148 points. And we projected it at 162, so we didn't quite get there. So we had a range of 150 to 173. So it fell just shy of that. But again, in a big blowout game, it's really hard to nail that total. Um, let's see if Howard and Villanova's in here. All right, it does pull up Howard. And I know Villanova's going to be in there. So again, we got minus 19, minus 10, alt line minus 20. So we've got an average of minus 16. So we had 88.72 for an average score. Um, here we had 91, 71, 86, 76. And so the power algo line was 19. They won by 19 and put up 181 points, which is a crap ton of points. Um, and so our model here, we had it about 161. And to check that, you can see the combined last threes, 167.8, allowed 154.7. We're kind of right in that range, so I'm good with that number. Um, and on this, an over would have really looked because you could look and say, okay, Villanova was 2-0 and for the over, and then they were 1-1, one and -one, I'm assuming. And you can see they're going over by a drastic amount of points. And so this one, I'm sure, whatever the line was, it cruised over. And then let's look at Seton Hall. Seton Hall and Michigan. So Michigan's the number four team. Um, Seton Hall is 3-0. Or they're three zero now. I don't. I think that's updated. Um, but they were unranked, so we had Seton Hall minus seven there, minus seven there, and then minus nine on an average line. So we had it around seventy three sixty four. It was sixty seven sixty five. I'm sure Seton Hall was a dog because like eighty five percent of the clicks were on Michigan to win. Um, so they scored one hundred and thirty two points. We had one hundred and thirty seven. So we were kind of in that ballpark again. I don't know what the total was. Um, but you can see Seton Hall was 0-3, 1-2. and So just let's take a look at one of today's games. So going on, let's look at Geo Mason. And I know it's Geo Mason because I looked it up and couldn't find it. And Maryland. So this line is Maryland minus 9.5 over under of 141. So right here we have Geo Mason by 5. So we have the other side favored. And the cheat line is minus 8. So here these have Geo or George Mason favored over Maryland and the alt line, we're just grain of salt looking at that. So we got an average line of 74.63, total of 139. So we're really close to the Vegas total. We're at 139, Vegas pegged it at 141. So I'd say probably stay away from that unless you have a dying need on one side. Um, nothing on the betting trends jumps out at me. Everything's really close, slightly into the under. Their scored versus allowed is drastically different. So this could go high or low. Coming down here, looking at the possessions, we have it projected about 72.5, which is pretty close. It's kind of in the middle of everything, so I don't have an issue with that. Um, so curious to see what happens. They have Maryland minus 9.5, so in this scenario, I would probably lean on George Mason, but again, these they only have three games under their belt, so I would look at see, and see who they play to determine you know, if I like that or if I don't like that. Uh, but again, that's kind of what this would spit out and let's go ahead and look at one more So the main thing in this tutorial is I just want to show you how to look at the sheet and how to read it So you can kind of see what you're looking at So I don't like labeling something as 
this is a tier one play or tier two play and I want to show you how to look at it and determine hey you know this is good I like the data or no this data sucks it's skewed all right so we got northern Iowa and Arkansas let's look at this one then we'll wrap this up so here we have a six percent edge to Arkansas as a much better school they are 2-0, 2-0 at home. Northern Iowa is 1-2, has not played a road game. Vegas has led at Arkansas, minus 12.5 and, and over under 141. So we've got them covering that on the power algo of 16. The basic cheat line even has it at 12. So that tells me the difference of those two puts it over the Vegas line. Alt line, again, grain of salt, 24. We average it out. We've got it about 75 or 76 to 58 or 59 points. So covering the 12 and a half so that's the way that I would lean but I always want to come over here and check my sports betting trends so Northern Iowa 0 and 2 ATS Arkansas also 0 and 2 ATS so neither team is covered yet um, but you can see Northern Iowa is 20 points behind the Vegas numbers when Arkansas they're right there they're only four points behind it so I would still probably lean Arkansas on this model um, as far as the total we've got it at 134 the total is 141 um, neither team is really crushing it, but again, we don't have that many games to look at, so I would probably lean Arkansas, lay the 12 and a half here, and fade the total. Um, I don't like it either way, but again, there's only three games, so I'm not betting a ton of college basketball right now, but I do want to get the sheet out, so everybody can kind of take a look at it, play with it, and again, there's so many college basketball games every day, there's no way that I can sit down and go through every single one of these. I mean, just look at all these. I mean, if you get into some of these smaller schools, I mean, it's just, it, it's overwhelming how many games there are. So I like to put it out there because people who live in different areas, they follow different divisions and different schools. And hopefully this will help you find some games, pick some bets. Um, as the season goes on, we'll go in and we'll break down some games and whatnot. But this is really good for the NCAA tournament. It's a lot of fun to play with. So I'm going to post it today. Today's November 17th. Play with it, have fun with it. I will try to update it daily. If not daily, every other day I will get the data updated, but it will definitely be updated for like Friday, Saturday, Sunday for big games. Um, that Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I may miss a day in there. I get really busy trying to do the golf sheet and the football sheet and the, oh, well, we got college football, NFL football, um, NBA, it's popping every day now, PGA, so usually Monday night, Tuesdays, I get really busy trying to get all those together, but College Hoops is up. I want to thank Edward last night. He posted a very large wager on Yale minus three and a half in the chat, and I about fell out of my chair when I saw it, and they absolutely rolled. I think they won by 18 to 20. Um, I text my buddy, and I was like, hey, look at this guy. You know, he's got I don't want to give it away, but a large amount of money on this game, more than what I typically ever think about betting. And so I threw 50 bucks on it. My buddy threw 500 on it, and they won by 18 to 20. So Edward, my buddy, says thank you, and I do too. You kind of sparked me to get this college hoop sheet fine-tuned and out today for you. So I hope it helps, and good luck, guys. We'll talk to you soon.